So for example, a lot of countries around the world have some do's and don'ts. Like in India, you can't make jokes, for example, it's written in the constitution on the on the emblem, the Ashoka emblem. You can't make jokes on the national flag, you know, but you can make jokes on anything else. If you go to Dubai, you can't make jokes on Islam. You can't make jokes against ruler. Thailand has a different rule. So a lot of countries have their own thing. And there are so many topics. We come from India. You know, you open Times of India newspaper, every day you get six hours of material. So India is so beautiful, it is so rich in terms of the material you get. I think, you know, every day you can get six hours of material without offending anybody. And I was fortunate enough to perform at the Sydney Opera House with other Australian comedians. Uh, I have also performed in Antilla, which is uh, where the Ambani's live, who are the richest Indians. Just take it easy and I don't, I, I mean, I'm saying just take it, you know, it's a comedy show. Or, uh, come and laugh, you know. Good day everyone, my name is Nafni Danan from Vice Ajka Local and Global. Daddy Cool, yes, you heard it right. Daddy Cool, Atul Khatri, here with me in Sydney. Atulji, welcome to the thank show. Thank you, thank you, Nafni. Thank you for having me here. You know, Heart and Soul Production is doing yes. this show called Daddy Cool Chi. with you. Yes. How has Australia been treating you so far? Fantastic. This, first of all, this is my third time to Australia. And uh, generally from the heart, I travel around the world. I travel to the, I just came back from the US and Europe. I was one month in the US, one month in Europe. And I generally feel, first of all, Australian people are just so warm, you know, compared to the rest, you know, just in the restaurants, they are smiling, you know, they are like just happy. Then you ha you ask people help. So I, I, I was just feeling And a lot bath. of times you don't have to ask for it. Exactly, and they just, I just generally, they're very, very helpful. And in terms of stand up comedy, which I am, you know, I think Australians are one of the lovers of stand up comedy. Like yesterday, I was in a random club in Melbourne performing, just an open mic. Open mic Tuesday night, there were like 250 people who have come to just support comedy. There were no big stars. As in, you know, some big comedian name was there. It was just open micers and there were 250 people and they said, it's a slow night. Usually we have 400 people. Wow. <laughs> On a Tuesday night working day, you know. So that's why Australians uh, love comedy and I also, honestly, from the heart, generally love performing in Australia. Well, this format of stand-up comedy has she, picked up yeah. in the last, I think, five to seven no, no, years. No, ten years. Ten years. Ten years. Ten, yes. All of a sudden, this has become a mainstream format. Ji. So when did you realize that you would be entering So first field? of all, stand-up comedy as per our genre, where we go up in English and talk and we stand up, you know, we talk about all topics in the world. This is 10 years old, but if you know, India has been having like mimicry artists like Sir Johnny Liver, yes. uh, Raju Srivastava, such big legends. They've been doing it for much before us, you know. But as per my career started, I started uh, doing my, uh, I was actually a CEO of an IT company. Yes, I know that. And it was a New Year registration, 1st Jan 2012. Uh, I said, I don't want to die in a corporate job. <laughs> so let me try something new. So I was 44. I said, are we okay? Well, then a midlife crisis was settling in. So I uh, was, uh, I went for an open mic. So open mic is a night when any one of you can go up on stage uh, in Melbourne Bay. I think every Melbourne, Sydney, Australia, I think every week of the day they are having That's these right. things. Mm. You can go up and try your luck. So I went for one of those nights. I found it very, very nice. It was... Uh, 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 I will say one nasha chad gaya. It is very addictive. So I started going for more open mics. And for four years, I did both my work as well as my stand-up comedy in the evening. And in 2016, but I quit and got full-time into stand-up comedy. Wow. Yeah. So what is your approach towards stand-up comedy? My approach is to basically talk about things which are around us, you know. Mm -hmm. See, the idea is when I go up on stage and, uh, uh, you know, you, are an, you know, don't know me, you're an audience member. I talk about a story. And suddenly the story relates to you. Oh my God, it happens to me also. You hmm. look at your wife, oh my God, we had the same discussion, which he's saying with, he had with his wife. There where you realize throughout the world, people have very similar issues. <laughs> and when a comedian goes up on stage, so I, I, I get a lot of feedback that your comedy is very relatable. Mm -hmm. uh, and it relates across age spectrum. So children also understand it. And I say children means 14, 15, mm -hmm. right up to 40, 50, they understand. They, they understand my comedy. They enjoy my comedy. And I think that's where the fun comes, where the comedy is relatable. You, you, you relate with the artist. Because it, suppose there is an 18-year-old kid who goes there and talks about dating, Tinder, this, and you say, I don't relate to this, you know. So comedy has to be relatable. It has to be fun. And yeah, so that's, I would say, is like my, my forte, I would say. You know, what I could have uh, understood, hmm. that observation is the key ingredient Absolutely. Uh, to stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the best decision that you think 
you have made that made you successful in this career? Uh, I wouldn't say there'll be a couple of decisions, as you said, right? You know, we comedians observe something which you don't see. So we may be both attending a, a cricket match, but you will see a different angle to it. I will see something totally different to it. The fun part of it, when they, then you will say, oh my God, how did I miss this? You know, and I think uh, there will be a lot of small, small decisions like uh, in, in, in terms of my career. Uh, somewhere in 2014, I took part in this contest called CEO's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. uh, since I was a CEO of an IT company. Uh, so just like you got India's Got Talent, Australia's Got Talent. Uh, I took part in CEO's Got Talent and won that award in that uh, there was judges were Ravina Tandon, Mahesh Bhatt, Raj Naik, who was ex CEO of Colors TV. And, uh, uh, you know, I remember what Mr. Mahesh Bhatt said, uh, why I, I, they chose me as a winner. He's saying there were a lot of other CEOs, Koi gana ga raha tha, somebody was dancing, somebody was doing this. He's saying, but you came alone, one person alone on mic and without any, you know, supporting acts <laughs> or supporting staff. And you no made problems. Us, and you made us laugh, you know, and you made us entertained, you know. So I think that, uh, that's the beauty of stand-up comedy. And you have to understand stand-up comedy is a very new art form in India. People are still just 10 years old. You know, movies have been there for 100, 100 plus years. You know, a cricket has been entertaining us for how many years? But stand-up comedy is a new entertainment art form. And people are now realizing that you can go for a good comedy show and have a good night. You go for a Bollywood movie, picture achhi ho, nahi achhi ho, you don't know. But good comedy night, you will have two and a half hours of you laugh and come back. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for coming straight from the airport and having a conversation with us. Going back uh, to comedy in India. People do get offended yeah. from time to time. Yeah. So what is the best criteria that you choose where you see to minimize the offense to the people or people taking that offense? Uh, see, I think there was, a, I think it was, uh, I forget the name. I think it was Woody Allen, who's a very big American comedian, come actor. Uh, he said that if you perform comedy and if you have not offended at least one person in the room, you've done a bad job. You know, mm -hmm. so people do get offended. You know, I just want to tell. But you the intentions is not to offend. Absolutely, no comedian in the world writes something to offend anybody. This religion go, that politician, this caste, nothing like that. Our intention is to make you laugh, honestly. You know, and it's a comedy show. Please come with a very different aspect. You know, uh, uh, what has happened is I think people have become a little bit more, I would say, sensitive. You know, and what has actually happened is you have a, you have this device, the mobile phone very high speed, like a high speed computer, where you can also, you know, immediately give an opinion, you can, you know, get offended by things like that, you know. So I think this overall social media and all has make, made us very, very, you know, angry, you know. You open, you wake up in the morning, you see some WhatsApp message, and you wake up in such an anger and you get offended and things like that. So as far as comedy is concerned, please don't get offended. These are all jokes. Nobody writes jokes to offend people. Just take it easy and I don't, I, I mean, I'm saying just take it, you know, it's a comedy show. Or come and laugh, you know. As far as, but I'll address this other question. So, for example, a lot of countries around the world have some do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. Like in India, uh, the, you can't make jokes, for example, in certain the constitution on the, on the emblem, the Ashoka emblem. You can't make jokes on the national flag, you know, but you can make jokes on anything else. If you go to Dubai, you can't make jokes on Islam. You can't make jokes against ruler. Thailand has a different rule. So a lot of countries have their own thing. And finally, at the end of it, if I really have a very strong opinion, will I talk about it, you know? Like for example, I don't understand religion much. I'm a religious person, Hindu religious person. But I don't understand any other religion much, so I don't feel that there's a reason to make jokes on religion unless it's, unless I really have a strong point on it, you know. And there are so many topics. We come from India. You know, you open Times of India newspaper, every day you get six hours of material, you know. Absolutely. You can make jokes on Bollywood, on cricket, on there are so many communities, there are so many castes. Every, you know, India is so beautiful, it is so rich in terms of the material you get. I think, you know, every day you can get six hours of material without offending anybody. There's no formal training for stand-up comedy. Yeah. No one has ever thought of doing a workshop on a stand-up comic. I think most of the people are thrown into the ocean and they learn how to swim while yeah. being in the journey. Or yeah. sometimes you have the natural instinct and the talent that you come out as a yeah. stand-up yeah. comic. Yeah. Any plans of any workshops being conducting ever? So there are now people starting workshops. So mm -hmm. what, see, comedy is two parts. One is the writing part. You write the jokes. Which Se is? The second is the performance, mm -hmm. you know. 
Now, writing jokes, you can teach somebody. There's, there are creative workshops. There are tools, techniques available. There are amazing books available. You can read these books and come to know. There's something called as rule of three. There is something called as callback. There are some technical words in, in comedy. There's something called as segues. You know, you, so there are some methodologies available to help you write. But finally, what you write, you have to go on stage and perform. Now, for example, there are, uh, there are, there are comedians who I've seen whose writing is fairly weak. But the performance on stage is so beautiful, it com overcompensates for the weak writing. But there are some comedians whose writing is so strong that they will go on stage, one mic, deadpan humor, but it's so well written, you know, that you will laugh. Like some of our Hasa Kavi, which you remember. So oh, yeah, Hasa saying, Kavi, huh, ji? Mm. Their writing is so strong, he goes deadpan without smiling, just goes and makes joke, bang, 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 and you are laughing. Right? Surindra Sharma. Surindra ji, yeah. So <laughs> that's how. Huh. Mary B V Bolio ah, and so, you are laughing. Exactly. This is the way he's saying it. So his writing is so strong. He doesn't require performance. He doesn't move also. Yeah. So it's a I say you can create teach somebody creative writing, but comedy is performance. You have to go on stage as much as you can, you know, hit the mic as much as you can and slowly and steadily you start improving that skill also. You know, practice makes the man Absolutely. perfect. Absolutely. It probably suits here. <laughs> Talking about Heart and Soul production, yes, the tour in Australia. Yes, I think there's a show happening in Sydney on yes, this weekend on this itself. Weekend, on this weekend, I on think at uh, Pioneer Theatre Castle. Here. Yes, Pioneer Theatre, and uh, this is my new show called Daddy Cool, which I've been taking it across the world, and this is sort of my final leg of the tour, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, so please come for it. It's a brand new show. If you've seen me before, also, uh, you know this is totally new material. You will enjoy the material. And uh, and actually, it's, as I said, I've been doing it for the last two years. So now you're seeing the best of the best. <laughs> it's totally chiseled, you know. And uh, I just had a show in Melbourne. It was a great success. Uh, the Melbourne crowd was so good. I got a standing ovation. So now I'm looking forward to Sydney because I know people in Sydney also enjoy comedy a lot. Any of the moments of your life that yeah. you want to relive? Uh, not really relive, but I, I thank God every day for whatever he's given me. You know, I, a lot of people say, uh, do you think you wish you could have started stand-up comedy earlier? Would I have made a difference? I'd say no. I think things landed at the right time. And that's how you should look at it. Don't overthink too much, you know. Uh, if I have to relive something, I think I would, do, I would relive my dating life. <laughs> that was great fun. You know, you get out of college, you are young, you, you know. You, you know getting accepted, you, getting rejected. Getting rejected, you know, the phone calls. And I, and we, I dated in India at a time when there was no cell phone. You know, mm -hmm. those days where you are getting a missed call three times on your landline and you know it's your girlfriend. <laughs> and after three times you have to go and after some time the family also knows. So after some time, your mom also said, "Bra, tera hi phone hoga, to thale. Team missed tere hai." So I think that was a very fun part. You know? And in spite of no mobile phone and no technology, we still dated. You know, we had love. You know? uh, what's on your wish list? On my wish list, I would love to perform. Uh, so I was there. I mean, since I'm in Sydney, uh, there was my wish list once to perform at the Sydney Opera House. And, uh, you know, God willing, in 2019, I did a show at the Sydney Opera House. I had come here uh, for the Just for Laughs Festival, which is one of the world's yes, largest yes, festivals yes, which yes, happens yes, in yes. Sydney. I was there and I was fortunate enough to perform at the Sydney Opera House with other Australian comedians. And so that was like one. So like as a comedian, you want to perform better. You want to write better. You, you want to perform at these, you know, uh, great uh, establishments or great venues which are there, you know. Uh, I have also performed in Antilla, which is uh, where the Ambani's live, who are the richest Indians. So, if you want to hear more about the story, you have to come for my show in Sydney because I talk about that. So, come for that uh, show. You will uh, you'll get my story about me performing at Antilla also, which is also one of the world's most expensive residence, you know. Absolutely. Private residence, yeah. <laughs> you know, before I wrap up, I just wanted to say thank you to the whole team at Heart and Soul Productions. Yes, thank because you, of them, Thank you, everybody. Yes. I got a chance to sit yes, next to you and as thank well. Thank you, Arunji. I got a chance to sit next to you. <laughs> <laughs> right. What is your final message to all the audiences in Sydney to come and watch you perform live at the Pioneer Theatre Castle Hill? I think, this I think my, my, final, my final thing would be I've come all the way from India you know, thousands of miles, you have to drive some few miles, come. And I promise you, uh, you will have one and a half, two hours of good laughter. I, 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 I generally promise you that. You know, and what happens is laughter uh, is, a, is the best medicine. It improves your blood circulation. 
it you know <laughs> makes you younger your blood cells get refreshed so nothing let it come for yourself you know come for yourself come to laugh and um, yeah and get enjoy that's it thank you look thank you so much thank you namneet for coming right from the airport to no, the no, studio no, to and has been wonderful <laughs> talking to you thank you so much thank you so much my name is namneet anand from voice hajkal local and global signing out bye for now thank you sir thank you thank you so much one stop answer to your australian education and visa matters jemco sydney dream big achieve big fiji times we with the times